Doctor Who, the Cloisters of Terror. In the year of our Lord, 1481, novice Eleanor went from her chambers in dead of night, never to be seen again. 1915, another girl goes missing. And another in 1946. And another in 1961. But that must be a coincidence. I don't want to alarm you but I don't think we're alone in here. Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to another Big Finish audio review and today I'll be taking a look at the sixth story from the fourth Doctor Adventures which is season four by Jonathan Morris, The Cloisters of Terror. Starring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor of course and Louise Jameson as Leela for this full cast audio drama. If you want to go straight to review and don't want to see how this audio is showcased then there is the time, if you have or haven't skipped, let's begin the video. So for this cover it is created by Anthony Lamb and I gotta say his covers are magnificent from season 5. Such as the Labyrinth of Buddha Castle. The um, Paradox Planet, it just completely went out of my mind for a split second. And the Legacy of Death, it just looks so well done and he's put a lot of time and effort in that. So great covers by Anthony Lamb, he's definitely improved from the highest science. So for this cover is rather simplistic I would say, but I still like it, it looks quite creepy, especially with the three nuns back here. But anyway, for the cover we have the fourth Doctor here, and I know this is a slight error, he's wearing the wrong coat, but yeah, everyone makes mistakes, I'm not too fussed about it. Yeah, it isn't mentioned in the story, but he does wear a different variation of a coat, but anyway, who cares really. Anyway, we have Leela by here and the three nuns, we have St. Matilda's College in the background, and we have a nice... A nice, um, looks like a spider cobweb effect on there, it looks quite nice. So for the side of the CD, we have Tom Baker's picture up there, or the fourth Doctor. It's always nice where they blend in, oh, it nearly fell over then. It's always nice where it blends into the white, it looks great. And Doctor Who, the Cloisters of Terror, 4.6, and then the big finish logo down there. And for the back, it is directed by Nicholas Briggs. We got our blurb about the story, which I'll place in the description, but I'll just go for the summary anyway in the review. And then we have the cast featured in the story and who plays the characters as it is 60 minute approx, including behind the scenes. And when we open it up, we take the disc out, it is one disc with part one and part two. We had advertisements for the first five stories of scenes of four and a couple of novel adaptions. And we have the leaflet, this variation looks absolutely incredible. And we have the next installment, which I have got, I'll review it probably next week, The Fate of Kralos, which I have listened to and have got finally, then production credits in Doctor Who magazine. And then we have this variation, the other logo, it just doesn't match this, it's really in your face. Now to my review of The Cloisters of Terror by Jonathan Morris. I, including so many others, was really looking forward to this one. For obvious reasons, the trailer is absolutely incredible and just really got us ready for this release. Yeah, I was expecting this one to be a good Hammer Horror style story, just like The Darkness of Glass, which if you see my review of that, I really did enjoy that one. So I was hoping The Cloisters of Terror can be even better than that one and might be the top spot for season 4 and if not overall and also including it is Jonathan Morris who is my personal favourite Big Finish writer so I was expecting the best however overhyping a release can be its downfall it's happened before Last of the Sidemen was hyped I was hyping it personally I was really looking forward to it but Alan Barnes let me down and it turned out underwhelming unfortunately and some people have found that with the Triver Sutek, I personally didn't, but that's unrelevant to the video. Now I'll go through the story part by part, so let's go through part one, of course. And right from the start, it just feels a very powerful story. It just screams hammer horror to me, so that's great for me. Yeah, the start of it is very powerful of a character, I won't say who it is, being mentally tormented by these nuns who are mocking her. And this character is scared out of her wits, and just to let you know, all the supporting characters are female. And of course, by the trailer, when you see the nuns, then that's it. The start of it just has brilliant atmosphere, delivers tension and chills to the listener. It's very good for a nighttime listen. And also the sound score of it is very creepy and spooky. And another thing, it's not just music all the way through. They pretty much just use the background effect just with rain and thunderstorms and it works perfectly. But yeah, that intro scene is so powerful it is, I love it. So that's obviously a 
great start for a story and a good old horror one, isn't it? And the Doctor and Eda take a bit of time to get in the story, around about five minutes. Just have a little bit of insight of all the supporting characters, which is great. I absolutely accept that, to be honest. I think that's great. And then when the Doctor and Leela get in the picture of the story, we have a very good back history explained by Emily Shaw about the events of the college, such as the many innocent lives that are apparently been taken. So yeah, this story leaves a bunch of questions waiting to be answered. Which of course intrigues the listener to carry on to find out what they are. And the Doctor's interactions with Emily Shaw is brilliant. They just get along so well. I am very intrigued about the last post and see what they're like with the third Doctor. I know it is a companion chronicle but I'm still very intrigued by it. But it's nice to get some history about Liz Shaw's mother. Yeah, Emily Shaw bonds with Leela and the Doctor just brilliantly. I say to myself, why not her being a companion? She works so well. No, I love it when the nuns get into action with this story. They're just very creepy. And you think running away will do anything, but they will mentally torment you until you follow them. So yeah, it's quite powerful stuff. But yeah, in the trailer, Leela actually sees the nuns. Oh dear me. But she's a very strong and fearless character. Even the nuns tormenting her will not be good enough. So that might sort of anger the nuns. You just have to wait and see what happens with that because... A couple of voices in Leela's head won't really make Leela afraid at all, won't it? Another thing I like is the setting, especially in St. Matilda's College. It's just so atmospheric and isolated, and you always feel like you're being watched from the shadows. That's what the Doctor feels like in this story, and Emily Shaw. I would say um, Emily Shaw does feel like the companion to the Doctor a little bit. So I do have the feeling that they would be good together. So hopefully they might have another story. Emily Shaw will appear in another story with the fourth Doctor again, or any old Doctor. But yeah, back to the St. Matilda's College. Yeah, especially when they're in the library looking for the books about the history of St. Matilda's College to get some more answers. And we introduce with a character which is Sister Frances Beckett. Now I've got to turn it around if I'm getting that right. Yeah, Frances Beckett. She's a very creepy character. She just walks around and appears completely out of nowhere. Yeah, she's quite a scary character. Again, I won't go too much in the characters because I'm not at that point yet of the review. But yeah, very good female cast in this audio. So then, when the final part does conclude, the listener may expect where Jonathan Morris is leading with the story. But unfortunately, how the questions are answered has been rather mixed by fans. Some saying it is very good, actually and interest in the way the story is progressed and then some are saying that it's rather dull and leaves the story completely nowhere and then they say sadly this fourth doctor audio was rather forgettable and underwhelming so that got me a little bit worried when i heard that because i don't want it to be no suburban hell again yeah then we come into part two this is where with a lot of people the story just goes downhill unfortunately do i agree with this Yes, yeah, sadly, but Jonathan Morris did pick a move which was very unsatisfying. Part 1 was going so well and then the story just changes during Part 2. And yeah, maybe predictable with some people, but it wasn't what I wanted to happen and left me rather underwhelmed. So yeah, when Part 1 concluded and very early Part 2, pretty much all the questions, which was a mystery, was already answered, so... The only thing going for part two is to stop the evil and that's it. So leaving part two in the state like that was poorly done. However, nothing under average, definitely not, but still not Jonathan Morris level. So yeah, the concluding part of this story was underwhelming, but some memorable moments here and there, such as Leela putting trust with the Doctor. Which was a very heavy thing in season 3 of the 4th Doctor Adventures. Where Leela did something quite big in the King of Sontar. Which did sort of cripple their relationship. And over time they have built up a very strong relationship. And you can tell Leela can put 100% trust. Even though there is a 50-50% chance it may not work. But other than that, part 2 was rather embarrassing compared to part 1. Part 1 was 
over the moon, just fantastic. And something even more worse happens, the villain's fear factor goes down as well, but it loses it in part 2, which is terrible. That is my biggest criticism with this audio. So I've gone through the structure of the story with part 1 and part 2, now let's go through the characters and the cast featured in this audio. Of course we'll start with the main cast, which is the Doctor. Of course, very strong performances, he's definitely improved from, let's say, season 1. And as I said, very strong writing with the Doctor and Leela. And again, I will reiterate my points, just like Season 3. And Leela, strong fearless companion, not intimidated by the nuns as they try to torment Leela. But the main thing about this audio is that Leela has 100% trust in the Doctor. So everything in Season 3 built up with their relationship does tie in this audio quite a bit. Now with the supporting characters, we have Emily Shaw, which is Rowena Cooper, a great character in this story. Uh, again, it's nice to learn about Liz Shaw's mother. But yeah, she's such a good character. I wish she was a companion to the Doctor or had more stories because she was wonderful in this one. And yeah, thanks to this audio, I am interested in picking up the last post. Next one is Sister Frances Beckett, which is Rashenda Kerry, another strong character who is quite creepy in some scenes but I will leave her character a mystery. And the next two coming up don't have a huge part of the story, but still, they are good, but I will say they are a tad forgettable, as Sister Frances Beckett and Emily Shaw do overshadow them. So yeah, Megan Matthews, played by Claudia Grant. Again, as I said, not as memorable as the other two I just said, in my opinion, but still a good character, nice interactions with Leela, but in my personal opinion, the other two overshadowed her but still very good performances and voice acting. And to the penultimate, Lynn Pickering, which is Alison McKenzie. Not a character used too much, but later on, at some stage of the story, she does have more of a role in the story, but again, I'm going to leave her pretty much a mystery. And lastly, we have the voice of the nuns, which is Jane Slaven. Creepy for the most part, especially part one, but does lose its fear factor in part two. Definitely not good for a horror story. So to conclude, what do I think about The Cloisters of Terror? It's not a true Jonathan Morris story. But still, I'm not going to take my faith off Jonathan Morris. He's a great writer. Not everyone's perfect. Everyone has their ups and downs. And unfortunately, this is a downer for Jonathan Morris, in my personal opinion. But I expect We Are the Daleks to be strong. But still, not a bad story whatsoever, no. If I would rate the story or the parts individually, part 1 would get a 10 out of 10. Part 1 is utter perfection. But part 2 really does cripple it with a 6 out of 10. So overall, Cloisters of Terror gets a 7 out of 10. I think it is a fair rating. Because I don't hate the story, but part 2 could be a hell of a lot better. And it would have been an 8, but it goes to a 7 as the villain, as I've said multiple times, lost its fear factor. So thank you very much for watching the review of The Cloisters of Terror. I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll see you in the next one and have a good one.